Hello, in this video, I'm going to look at how you query an API continuously while a program is running, a program that's perhaps animating something, and that animation doesn't stop, it continues smoothly, but updates whenever new data comes in. Boy, isn't that an exciting topic. <laughs> you woke up this morning and thought, I want to watch a video about how you query an API continuously while an animation is happening, right? Okay, so um, that's what I woke up thinking I was going to do, is make a video about that. Actually, I just thought of this a few minutes ago, so I didn't really wake up thinking about it. But let's just get started. So this, by the way, is a program that I've set up in advance just to have like a simple animation on the screen. Nothing too exciting. This line is moving across. There's a single variable for the line. The line is incrementing by five pixels. When it gets to the end, it starts back at zero. So we can see there's an animation. Now what I need to demonstrate this idea is I need an API that's going to give me data, and it's going to give me different data every time I query it. So a lot of APIs don't really do this. For example, if you ask for the weather, uh, you're going to get the temperature outside. And the temperature outside obviously is changing, but the weather API probably is only going to update every few minutes. Uh, you know, if you ask for the New York Times to do an article search, you know, there's not going to be a lot of new articles uh, every you know, the, uh, with a certain word every like few seconds. However, there is this uh, uh, API called uh, that's uh, on, their, on the OpenNotify.org. And it gives you uh, the International Space Station current location. And by the way, <laughs> in case you were wondering, that's changing. It's moving. Are the Earth is spinning? I don't know. Somehow it all works. Physics. Ask Stephen Hawking. <laughs> I don't know about this stuff, although I find it fascinating. So what we can look for here is like, look, here is how. Here is the URL for getting JSON data with the latitude and longitude of the International Space Station. So I, all I need is this particular URL. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to put it in the web browser to look at that data. And we can see there it is. The International Space Station position is currently at this particular latitude and this particular longitude. Hit refresh. Oh, come on, change. It changed, right? You can see it's changing each time I hit refresh. A little bit, but changing. Whoa, it's moving by a fast latitude. This is, like a, this is called the refresh dance, by the way. <laughs> it's good. Physical exercise is important. While I'm standing making these videos, I feel like I need to move around more. OK, so, uh, so when you practice APIs, you know, move around. Where was I? <laughs> um, so this is some stuff that I want to get, I want to get into, my, into the program. So first, let's just, let's just get started with that. So the first thing I want to do is grab this URL now. And inside the program, I, maybe just in setup right now, I'm going to say load JSON. And I'm going to say the URL is, uh, let's, uh, for this particular API, and let's just make this a global variable. I'm trying to make things that fit in my code nicely. Var URL equals ah, <laughs> bad copy paste job. Uh, paste that in there. So that's the URL for the API query. Let's make this a little bit wider. So now I want to load JSON. I'm using the p5 load JSON function, which says give me a URL, which it doesn't say anything actually, but the thing you can give to it is the URL where you can get some JSON, and then uh, a callback. So I'm going to call the callback got data. So this function will be executed when the data has come back. So I'm going to say function. Now I'm going to write that function got data. The argument, the parameter of that function, which I happen to be calling data, you can call it anything you want, like a manatee. Um, the, <laughs> the, the, the parameter data is what's going to get filled with the JSON that's coming from that URL. So you know, just quickly, if I just said print line data, we'd be able to see very easily that, oops. Mm. Uh, OK, ah, so remember this thing I talked about this in a previous video. Boy, I hope this works. Sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes it doesn't work because of security issues with how information is passed between different servers. And OpenNotify.org is a different server. And if you just add some padding, uh, so this thing called JSONP, uh, this, uh, if you add a third argument, JSONP, maybe someday I'll make a video just what is this JSONP thing. It's telling P5 behind the scenes to use this other way of getting the data that kind of passes security. So hopefully now, when I run this sketch, we can see, and there it is. Now you can see the data showed up down here in the console. I've got that data. So looking at this, remember, the next thing that we need to do is figure out how do I get the latitude, how do I get the longitude? Well. JavaScript object notation is the way that I do this. This whole thing is an object. And I want to get the first property, ISS position. And then I want to get the first property of ISS position, latitude. I want to get the second property of ISS position, longitude. And by the way, I said first and second 
in objects, the order doesn't actually matter. It's not like an array where you would be referencing from the index. You'd be re you're, you, you be, I, I'll be, I am. <laughs> I don't know what tense I'm in anymore. <laughs> Present, past, future perfect, something like that. But uh, I'm going to, in a moment, on the computer, type in data.issposition.latitude. That's how I traverse into this JSON data. Okay, so back here, I'm now going to say uh, print line, just to make sure this is working, print line, data.issposition.latitude. What rhymes with latitude? Fortitude? I don't know. Uh, okay, and you can see, there it is, beautiful. So let's think about what I might do now. Hmm. With that data, what, what might I do? Okay, well let's say I wanna draw the space station on the screen, and my space station, again, from the person with no visual talents, will be a circle. So let's, let's do a, let's make a variable called ISSX. ISSY, because I want to make variables that are impossible to pronounce. And in got data, I'm just going to say ISSX equals the latitude, and ISSY equals the, say it with me now, I feel like I'm Mr. Mr. Rogers, <laughs> longitude. Can you say longitude? It would be, an, it, yeah, that's a good thing to aspire to, to be Mr. Rogers. Um, so I put those in those variables, and let's give those variables some default values just to start. And then let's, in our program, it's our, pro I, I feel like this belongs to you and me, this program, <laughs> so I could say our program. Uh, I'm gonna draw the International Space Station. And now I'm gonna say fill 255. Here we go. And where is it? Hmm, I don't see that International Space Station. Why don't I see that International Space Station? What data am I getting? 50, negative 95. Well, if I draw something at the pixel x equals 50 and the pixel x equal, uh, y equals negative 95, that's where? 50 over, that's way off the screen. So this brings up an interesting question. I have a latitude and longitude. I have, that's real world measurement data of where the ISS actually is above the earth in the units latitude and longitude. But this thing that I'm drawing in the window is pixels. It's two dimensional, it's got an X axis, it's got a Y axis, zero, zero is the top left corner. So I somehow need to translate latitude and longitude to X and Y. Now, a topic for another video might be how to do that using, you know, quote unquote correct, I won't use air quotes here, but quote unquote correct math, right? If you take a sphere and you flatten it out, you need to do some sort of like spherical transformation of those spherical coordinates to where they are in a 2D plane. Eh, but you know, sometimes in life, that's too complicated. I don't wanna worry about that right now, it hurts. I have like a pain that's like, it's in my, my lower back right now and uh, just wanna like live an easy and friendly life. And you know what, the way that we could do that is just with the map function. Because latitude has a range between negative 90 and 90 and longitude has a range between negative 180 and 180. Which one is it? Well, it's got a, one of these was negative 95. I was right about that. So I could just take those ranges and map them from zero to pixel width from zero to pixel height. So let's do that. So what I really want to do is I'm going to say uh, var lat equals the latitude, var long equals the longitude, and then ISSX equals a map, the latitude, which goes from negative 90 to 90 to between zero and width. So if you recall, I definitely have a video somewhere all just about this map function. What the map function does is it takes a value that has a given range and maps that value to another range. By the way, you could do that math yourself if you wanted to. I know you guys, I believe in you. It's not that complicated, but it's nice to have the map function to handle that for you. And I think perhaps in my other video, I talk about what the math behind the map function is. Okay, so now if we run this, dun, 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 look, there it is, the International Space Station. And if I hit refresh, come on, move. You can see it's like moving a little bit, very ever so slowly and slightly. So, you know, I probably could do a better job of making this appear more individually interesting, but we've got something working here. But I, I spent all this time, I've been talking for nine and a half minutes, and I haven't even gotten to, just this is just all set up, uh, all set up for the, the real uh, tofu, I don't want to say meat, <laughs> makes it sounds weird, the real like essence of this video, which is now, I, all I did was query that URL at the beginning in setup, and I got the data once. I want to just keep getting that data over and over again. How do I do that? Okay, so there's a couple possibilities here of how you could do that. 
One thing is I have this draw loop. Draw, remember, is looping over and over again for the purpose of the animation. So I could figure out a way to just put the load JSON function in draw. Like that would be querying the API 60 times per second. Now that's probably way too often. So another way I could do is use some kind of counter and say like every 10 times through draw or every 30 times or every 100 times query the API. All of those are possible. And I encourage you to try doing that on your own as an exercise or put something in the comments and say, hey, can you link to some code that does that? I'd be glad to do that. But what I want to demonstrate to you in this video is another way of doing it. And I will shuffle off, shuffle off the buffalo over here. Buffalo. And uh, I'm going to do this with a function called set time out. And even better yet, I think maybe I'll actually do it with a function called set interval. These are functions that are part of JavaScript itself in the browser. These are not P5 functions. And what these functions do, set timeout says trigger an event once, you know, at blank time. So set timeout says, I want you to do this event and I want you to do it three seconds from now. Set interval is very similar, trigger an event over and over every blank time, every blank milliseconds. Time should really say milliseconds, at blank milliseconds, at blank milliseconds. So, right, the difference is uh, the event is clap, right? I'm gonna say the event is clap. So if I say set time out 3,000, what's gonna happen is 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000. <laughs> if I say set interval 3,000, what's gonna happen is 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000. <laughs> 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, right? right? It's going to do that at the same interval over and over again. So you can ask yourself, which one is the one you want for this program? I want to ask for the data every so often. So I can use set interval. Now, there's some nuance to this. There's some reasons why in other scenarios you, I'd want to use set timeout, and then once I get the data back, just ask for it again. That actually could be a good way of doing this, but set interval is going to be kind of easiest for us right now. So the way that these functions work is, you know, if I'm using set interval, for example, set interval, uh, and then I'm going to pass in a callback. This is the function name of the thing that I want to happen every blank uh, milliseconds. So all I need to do is say set interval, do this thing every so often. Let's look at that over here now. So in setup, I want this to start in setup. I want to say set interval, ask ISS every, what should we do? Let's just do every second. So 1,000. So this now, oops, this line of code says, execute some function called ask ISS every 1,000 milliseconds. And the magic of JavaScript and asynchronous events is I can set that thing up going and it's gonna happen on its own, but draw down here will also continue. So this animation will continue, the API calls will be happening, when the data's ready, the got data function will happen. Everything, that whole, how the order of everything will happen will be managed by the magic of JavaScript event-based handling. So all I need to do is set up the events. I need to say, set up this interval and then also do draw at the same time, which is what I'm doing in this program. So now, what goes in this function called ask ISS? This load JSON call. So I just want to do exactly this load JSON call every 1,000 seconds for the rest of time, at least while the program is running. And we can run this now, and you can see, there it is. Come on, move, dot, move, ISS, get some speed going. So one thing that I might do actually here is change my mapping, <laughs> right? This mapping is kind of, I was kind of mapping the full latitude longitude of the entire world. But we can see here that it's currently at latitude 47 and currently at longitude negative 54. So let's go between 45 and 50 and like negative 55 and 50. So if I change this to be between uh, 45 and 50 and what did I say? Negative 55 and negative 50. I think if I do that, uh, we're gonna get some, oh look, there it is, it's moving. Can you see the space station? It's, the, the space station is flying every second. Now, I'm, you can see it has a rhythm to it because I'm querying it every second. What I would love to do with this, but I've been kind of, this is video is approaching 15 minutes, is I would love to like add a little easing motion into it so it doesn't just jump to the next spot, but when it gets a new spot, it sort of smoothly moves and you can make it sort of feel like it's moving. You know, I would also love to put an actual map there, I'd love to do the correct spherical maths. 
I said maths again without even thinking about it. Usually I do that just because I like saying maths. But, um, oh, it's leaving. Goodbye, International Space Station. Um, so anyway, so, but I'll leave that for you, exercise for you guys. So um, what I would say is like, give this a try. Like build exactly the same thing. What happens if you do it every 10 milliseconds versus every 3,000 3, 3, milliseconds? You know, could you make it move, move, interpolate between those two locations? I can't, I'm trying to think of other exercises that you could do. But play around with it. I'm sure you could be creative and come up with some ideas. And hopefully this video helped you learn something today. I don't have I don't have anything like say like Shiftman Tutu, although I think I just had to say Shiftman Tutu at the end of every video now. Okay, goodbye. Uh, broken mouse ma sleeping mouse. Hashtag sleeping mouse. You can uh, that you can if you watch this video, tweet me hashtag sleeping mouse Shiftman sleeping. I, I don't know. I'm not, how am I gonna keep track? I'm not gonna be able to search for these things. Never mind. Okay.